Blockchain is going to take over everything. The entire internet. It's Web3, man. Get on the train and make millions. Blockchain is a very long sequence of small files, each one containing a hash of the previous file, some new data, and a math problem, then distributed to anyone willing to store it in exchange for a little money. The big claim is that this is a tamper-proof repository, decentralized and not owned by anyone, allowing for interactions between parties with no trust. Its proponents declare blockchain applications are the solution to all the major problems of the current internet. The problem is a blockchain probably doesn't solve the security problems it claims, and the security problems it does solve are probably not the ones anyone has. The inefficiencies are probably not worth it, and many blockchain proposals could achieve the same security properties without using a blockchain. But then they'd miss out on all the hype. So in reality, are blockchain solutions worse than what they replace? And what uses are they a best fit for? The term blockchain was first described back in 1991 by a group of researchers who wanted to create a tool to timestamp digital documents so that they could not be backdated or changed. The technique was adapted and reinvented by Satoshi Nakamoto, a pseudonym for a person or group who in 2008 created the first blockchain-based project called Bitcoin. A blockchain protocol is a distributed append-only timestamped data structure. Blockchain allows for a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network where non-trusting members can verifiably interact with each other without the need for a trusted authority, such as a bank or government. The blockchain forms a centralized ledger containing all transactions ever made and then distributes copies of that ledger all over the network. At the lowest level of this infrastructure are the signed transactions. These denote an agreement between two participants, which may involve the transfer of physical or digital assets or the completion of a task. Transactions are put into a block, which contains a hash of the previous block in the chain along with the new transactions. This new block is then sent out through a peer-to-peer -peer network to nodes, which are computers with a copy of the blockchain. Mining nodes compete to verify the block and through a consensus protocol, validate the transaction and broadcast it back out to all the nodes in the network, and that becomes the new state of the blockchain. This public blockchain architecture means that the data and access to the system is available to anyone who is willing to participate. Private blockchains lacking consensus, currency, or a distributed centralized ledger have some external limitation on who can interact with the blockchain and its features. These are not anything new. They're distributed append-only databases with authorized individuals controlled by some trusted party. These structures have been around for decades and are really only blockchains in name only. And seemingly the only reason to operate one is to ride on the blockchain hype. The biggest differences to a traditional data store is that blockchain is decentralized control, allowing different parties to share information with each other without requiring a central authority. Blockchain is read and append only, so if you consider any data uses that require update or deletes, which is just about every application, blockchain is not inherently designed for it. Changes to data structure are possible, if sometimes difficult, in centralized data stores, while changes to a blockchain are very difficult, if not impossible in many cases, due to the lack of central authority. Because of these things, blockchain can be made completely public while maintaining data integrity, which is difficult to do with a normal database. The most common use of blockchain is for monetary transactions, most notably in Bitcoin, and in transfer of value with the current NFT hype. Other proposed uses are verification of trusted data, such as identity, reputation, credibility, or social credit scores, public key verifications, decentralized applications, and voting systems. Most of these cases involve a situation where there is no trusted party, or you're trying to avoid one, like a government for currency or a bank for transactions. Or it's a situation where trust is unknown and trying to be established, like identification. As with any technology, there are pros and cons, despite what ardent blockchain enthusiasts might claim. According to the US National Institute of Standards and Technology, there is hype around the use of blockchain technology, yet the technology is not well understood. It's not magical, it will not solve all problems. As with all new technology, there is a tendency to want to apply it to every sector in every way imaginable. The organization's report says blockchain's immutability is not complete and can be violated if an attacker garners enough resources to outpace the block creation rate of the network. This is called a 51% attack. Users also have to trust that other blockchain participants aren't colluding in secret to gain control of more than half of the block creation power, and that nodes accept and process transactions fairly. This sounds a bit unlikely until you realize that just 0.1%, about 50 miners, control 50% of Bitcoin's mining capacity. One of the most common claims about blockchain is its security. 
While true that outside of the entirely possible 51% attack, the data is hard to tamper with. That doesn't really solve for most common security issues, which is social engineering. Stealing passwords, gaining unauthorized access, and just scamming people is the most common type of data breach. And that's entirely possible with blockchain and possibly even more problematic since there's no trusted party to reverse unauthorized transfers or mitigate the damages. Another big selling point is transparency. Anyone with a node can see the transactional history of the entire blockchain. This allows for transparency of things like the movement of money, but this causes concern for things like healthcare information, voting records, and any PII. Data privacy is one of the top concerns in the modern age, and blockchain doesn't provide a solution for it. It allows for anonymity, but not necessarily security. The only thing that Bitcoin stores is wallet A transfers money to wallet B. But most applications have a need for more identifying data, which could compromise anonymity. Probably the most discussed issue right now is energy consumption. The compute resources required to run a large blockchain like Bitcoin consumes tons of electricity to mine and validate blocks. And the demand increases as the complexity of the math puzzles increase. Bitcoin is estimated to consume the same electricity as a small country. And that's just one blockchain implementation. Other applications claim to use much less power, but often that includes offsets to compensate for the application's consumption, which while nice, an offset doesn't really negate the energy that was consumed. There's a lot of claims of more efficient blockchains, but until one is proven out in the real world on a large scale, it remains a problem. Scalability is another issue. The time to write across nodes and verify the proof of work and form consensus slows down transaction times dramatically. And while there are claims of much faster transactions per second than Bitcoin and Ethereum can manage, it's still a struggle to reach what traditional systems already achieve. Block size also impedes scaling. As the chain gets longer, more and more data has to be stored and copied across the nodes. This increases transaction time and demands more bandwidth and storage. And this is for simple currency transaction data. Most applications have significantly more data stored in them. That brings us to the biggest selling point of blockchain and its biggest problem. Blockchain promises a trustless environment, free from powerful tech companies, governments, and corporations. And there's definitely a strong appeal for that. There's far too much misuse and exploitation of data. It's a problem and there needs to be innovative solutions for it. But does the current blockchain hype support that goal? Most blockchain enthusiasts have a narrow definition of trust, distilled into catchphrases. But is the verification provided by the tech the same as trust? Even though blockchains are said to not require trusted central authority, the reality is trust has just moved to the technology. Blockchain participants have to trust the cryptography used, the exchanges, that smart contracts are correct and bug-free, they must also rely on the competence of blockchain developers. When trust in technology is misplaced, there's no recourse, no human to escalate the problem to. If your exchange gets hacked, you lose your money. If your wallet gets hacked, you lose your money. If you forget your login credentials, you lose your money. If there's a bug in the code of your smart contract, you lose your money. If someone successfully hacks the blockchain security, you lose your money. And these problems are already appearing. Three top exchanges have been hacked while another is accused of insider trading. The most heavily scrutinized smart contract in history had a small bug that nobody noticed until someone used it to steal $50 million. Bitcoin is propped up by billions of imaginary dollars. And the entities blockchain is trying to avoid, governments, big tech, powerful corporations, are exactly the people with the resources to do a 51% attack. This narrow scope of trust ignores the greater ecosystem around technology applications. People still need to be in charge for governance outside the system. Just see the ongoing debate about changing the Bitcoin block size or in fixing the DAO attack against Ethereum. Creating software, releasing it, and then never changing it is not how software works. There's always a need to change the rules and make updates based on changes to users. And as long as changes need to be made, there will need to be people in charge. Looking at the larger picture, you can see how centralization will creep back in. With Bitcoin, there are only a few miners of consequence. There's one company that provides most of the mining hardware. There are only a few dominant exchanges, and most people interact with Bitcoin through these centralized systems. So why put so much effort into decentralizing it? Let's look at the case of a blockchain voting system. Removing control of voting from potentially corrupt governments and putting it directly into the control of the population sounds wonderful. But before you can even implement blockchain, you need to trust that voter registration is fair. Ballots are only given to eligible voters. Votes are anonymous and can't be forced. The end result displayed is the same as the recorded votes, and no extra votes are given to certain individuals. All of this is outside the function of blockchain, and it doesn't help solve any of those problems. 
and in some cases it might even make it harder to audit due to the anonymity. Most people wouldn't bother to figure out how to download the ledger from a node, decrypt it, verify their vote was counted correctly. They'll probably need some third party to build an app, a third party they'll need to trust to accurately tell them. In proposed blockchain solutions, you'll almost always find some sort of workaround to reintroduce a trusted party to oversee the trustless technology. Some of the biggest successes in blockchain applications are because there's a single application to enter data into, which is then available to everyone, such as logistics applications. This solves for a huge problem of many companies having their own data repository that don't interact with each other, so there's no consensus of data. That's an important problem to solve, but is blockchain really the critical component there? To answer the question of whether blockchain is needed, ask yourself, does the blockchain change the system of trust in any meaningful way, or does it just shift it around? Does it strengthen existing trust relationships or try to go against them? How can trust be abused by the new system, and is it better or worse than the potential abuses of the old system? And what would your system look like if you didn't use blockchain at all? You might consider these questions and find blockchain is the right fit for your data needs. There does seem to be potential in certain cases, but it doesn't seem to be the magic wand that many want it to be.